of today's video. So today I will show you how you can deploy your changes from one environment to another till the production. So let's discuss on a use case that we will cover in this video. So our first use case is we need to create a new custom object and fields. An object name will be copper demo and we'll create a custom field also over there in this object that is description. I just choose this simple use case to make you understand end to end process. So let's start how you can approach this use case. So the first step is we need to create a user story. So for that, let me open my copper.org. So in most of the cases, you will get user stories automatically created by your business and this team or someone else. Like they create user stories in project management tools like Jira and others and they will automatically get seen with the Copado or you can directly create user stories here in Copado as well. But for now, we will create a user story here because in Copado, without user story, we cannot deploy anything. So this will be the our first step. So let me take on this new user story. So let's enter a meaningful title. Next we have project. And this is the required field because our pipeline is directly connected to the project. So we should always map our user stories with the project. Next important field we have credentials. Credentials means where we are going to develop this user story. So here we are telling that we will deploy this user story in the day one org. And all other fields are optional. So for now we can leave them and click on save. So this is how you can create user story in Kapadu. So after creation, you can see the details of user story here. Like what is the title, what is the number and this is the path. So once you select credentials, on the basis of that, this part is automatically get created because in pipeline, we have already defined this flow, like how our changes will move further. And if you want to edit this page layout for this user story, in that case, you can easily do this one. Like you want to show credentials and uh, or other fields over here. Right now, they are in different different types. But if you want to have them on a single screen, in that case, you can easily update this page layout. And at a second step, let me log into day one sandbox. So we can create these objects and fields over there. So let me click on this day one. And on this credential record page, you will find a button open org. So let me click on this. So this is how you can directly open your org from the credentials page. Now let me open setup. Click on object manager. Click on create. So let me enter the name of the object that is copy to demo. So this is how I have created a custom object. Now let me add some fields. Click on new. Let's have only one field for now. So this is how I have created my object and field and I am done with my changes. So let me open my user history again. Now everything is fine till now. So I want to attach my changes with this user history. So for that, let me click on this commit changes. And this is our commit changes screen. And here you can see the grid of all the metadata. Like whatever metadata you have in your code, those you can find all here in this grid. And if you are not able to find out newly created metadata in this grid, then you can click on this reference DCF changes. So what it will do, it will make a call out to your org and we fetch newly created metadata from there. And if you want to click like when last metadata has been refreshed, that you can find here on bottom of the grid. Okay. And in this grid, you have like lots of options to filter out your metadata. Like you can filter out with the help of name, with the help of metadata type, last modified by, last modified date, edited by, and created date. And for now, I can see my object here in front of me. So this is the name of my object and this is the metadata type. So let me select this object. And if I want to see all the selected metadata, in that case, I can click over here on the selected metadata again. So whatever component you have selected, those will be visible over here. And whatever components you want to commit for this user story, you can select from here. And once you are done with the selection, you can change the git messages over here if you want. And you can click on the commit changes. So as of now, I'm just going to commit this copper demo object. So let me click on the commit changes. And this is going to take us on a screen that shows what's happening in the jail time. And you are not required to stay on this screen. If you want to work on something else, then you can click on this go back and work. And this will take some time. So in backend, it is going to create a new preserve branch, out of master branch. And then it is going to compare the files from what we have selected on the user story to what they are exist on the master branch. And going to commit those changes to our future branch. So once it will complete it, I will open it. I will show you that future branch. So the commit process has been completed. So as I have explained over there, like in the commit, Kapara creates a new future branch with this user story. And the source of that future branch is master branch. And whatever files and components we are committing with this user story, Kapara compare those components and files with the master branch and going to commit the changes into that feature branch. And now if I click on this build tab, then I can see the selected metadata here also. So this is another way to double check which components we have selected for this user story. And in case for example, we will create it from those selected components. So now let's open our git branch and see the latest commit over there. So for that, we need to click on this view in Git. So let me click on this. So it will open a Git interface in front of us. And our future branch is selected over here. 
and if you want to see our latest commit in that case you can click on this so over here we can take a look of all the gubbity files like over here right now i have committed only one file that is my object but if you have multiple files and if you have updated any files that you can track over here okay so now let me come back to my covered onc now we have committed our changes with the user story so now let me check on this deliver table so here we have a couple of options like edit promote and promote and deploy so if everything is good and if you want to promote this user story to the next environment so for that you need to check this ready to promote check box but before that let me open my pipeline so this is my pipeline and currently you don't see any numbers over here with the dev and odd now let me go back to my user story and check this ready to check box and see what will happen on our pipeline so i have checked this ready to promote check box so now let me go back to my pipeline and check is so if you remember before we had cow zero here but now after selecting ready to promote you can see one is here so basically this is the indicator for the release manager like this user story is completed by the developer and ready to deploy to the next environment so as of now we have marked only one user story to ready to promote but if you have marked multiple user stories then multiple counts will be here like if say you have marked five user stories then five will be here so now let's see how you can push this user story to the next environment so for that you need to click on this one so in this screen all the ready to promote user stories will be visible and from them you can select which one you want to deploy on and as of now we have only one user story and after selecting the user story you just need to click on this promote and deploy and it is going to take us on a new screen and now it is going to create a promotion branch out of the destination branch and in our case destination branch to the uat and merge the future branch into the promotion branch and then create the package and deploy it to the next environment and it is not required to stay on this screen but from here you can see the live deployment status or you can also go to the promotion record so let me click on this so on this promotion record you can see which feature branch is going to merge into the promotion branch and include it into the deployment so on the promotion record you can see all the selected user stories and and here you can see the deployment record so let me click on this to see the real time deployment status so here you can see deployment status is completed and completed 100% and because we had only one component in our deployment so it was done quickly but let's say you have lots of components in that case it will take some time and you want to know the real time status in that case you can click on this view deployment status over here you can see the real time status of component so this is how you can check uh, real time deployment status over here and here you can see the steps uh, included in the deployment but as of now we have only one stage that is git promotion but in real time applications you can have multiple steps over here like uh, post deployment and pre deployment steps like you want to take an approval before the deployment and after deployment you want to perform some manual operations so those kind of steps also you can include with your pipeline so i will show you those steps as sometime in future videos and you can see the deployment details over here like what all components were included in that and if you want to give your promotion bounds then you can click on this and for the deployment result you can click on this and if we click on this view result in that case you will find the deployment result okay now let me go back to my user story and refresh now after your successful deployment you will see some changes over here on the user story so if you check the credentials then credentials automatically get updated to the uat along with environment and if you see this path the path also get updated to the uat and if you deploy further in that case it will be played out to the production and why it leads to the uat only just because our user story is connected to the pipeline and in our pipeline we have defined next stage is the uat now let me log in to uat on and check our object there let me open object manager okay let me found kahana so you can see our object is here now so let me open it and let me open fields and relationship so if we notice here in the fields we do not have our custom field that is description why that is not here because while committing we have selected only that object and whenever we are going to commit only object in that case only standards field will be committed along with the object and whatever custom fields we have with that object we need to separately select them as well and this is not about the fields only whatever the other components we have that page like page layouts and record types and validation rules like any other thing if you have with that object in that case we need to select those as well along with object while committing the metadata changes now how that will you can win here that is a different scenario i will show in the next video so for now let me go back to the pipeline manager so now with the uat you can see the green icon this means deployment has been completed successfully in uat okay and another important thing that you can see is backward arrow count over here so what does it means this is saying like one user should be promoted and deployed to the next environment and this branch does not have those metadata changes and from here you can push all those metadata into this org and this time is called back promotion in kovado so with the help of back promotion we can sync our lower level orgs with the other orgs and if you want to back promote then you need to click on this and from here this is the same process that we have followed to promote our user story to deploy in the uat like you can select whatever user story you want to back promote and you can click on back promote and deploy okay and now if you see we do not have any user story pending to promote to the production so let's open our user story again so i just now our changes in the uat 
and place a June like our UAT is done and now we are assigned to deploy it to the production so for that if you'll go in the deliver tab again so you can notice here this checkbox is unchecked automatically so when deployment is completed into the one environment in that case open automatically unchecked this one and again if you want to deploy to the next environment in that case we can check it again so here we have two things ready to promote and promote and deploy so ready to promote means we are just saying like our user story is ready to promote and that user story will be visible in the pipeline and if you are checking this promote and deploy checkbox in that case promotion and deployment can be started instantly so if we have a requirement where we need to deploy our user story directly in that case we can select promote and deploy as we can select ready to promote so now let me select this promote and deploy and click on save so in the background promotion and deployment record has automatically get created and deployment get started so let's verify that one so let me click on this promotions so you can see over here this new promotion record has been created and once i open this one now you can see from uat to production and rest all the things are same like over here you can check the whatever user stories has been deployed and if you want to check the deployment status then you can click on here okay now let me go back to pipeline manager now you can see the green icon with the production as well this means our user story has been deployed to the production as well so let me open my user story again and now if you notice in this path then everything is green it means our user story deployed to the all the environments okay you can find that object in the production as well and now let's see what is next okay so here in this window we have seen two new terms future branch and promotion branch so let's discuss about them so when we are going to commit change changing user story then we are create a future branch for that user story and all the subsequent commits for the user story will be in the same branch means let's say you want to add more metadata after committing first time for the same user story so when you will commit changes again in that case there won't be any new branch for the same user story and changes will be committed into the same branch that was created on first time so we can say kapado create a future branch for each user story and the source of future branch is the main branch so we can say future branch created out of main branch so now the question is why kapado creates future branch for every user story then we can say due to this nature kapado provides more flexibility because we can deploy our metadata as per user stories for example let's say you have five user stories ready to deploy but your business wants only two to be deployed in that case in kapado you can select only those two user stories and deploy to the next environment So, due to these different different branches for each user story, Copilot will easily identify the changes for those user stories. Okay. Next, we have promotion branch. So, we can say when we are running a promotion in Copilot, Copilot creates a promotion branch out of destination branch, and after that, merge all the feature branches and create a package to deploy on the destination branch. For example, you want to deploy two user stories, then Copilot will take those feature branches of those user stories and extract the changes and deploy them to the destination. So, in that sense, we can say feature branch will be created for every user story. and promotion branch will be created for every promotion or deployment okay so that's it in this video and we have seen like how you can deploy your change with copado using point and click tool so in this video i took a very simple example to make you understand but in next video i will cover more scenarios to deploy like how you can deploy permissions fence page layouts and how you can deploy multiple metadata and how you can deploy apex classes with multiple scenarios and if you have any kind of question till now then please feel free to ask me here in the chat or you can find my email id in the description so please like this video and subscribe my youtube channel thank you for watching this i will see you in the next video